because we have the great Monica Crowley, former assistant treasury secretary and host of the Monica Crowley podcast. Got to get that in at risk of my life. And Joe <laughs> Concha, media and politics columnist at The Hill, Fox News contributor and author of a very good book, by the way. It's called Come, Come on, on, Man. man. Come on, man. Oh, anyway, it's a really good book. Thank you. We had him on the radio. I've been skimming the book. It's uh, terrific stuff. Kids, we've got a bunch of things to do. Um, let me just start with this, Monica Crowley. Um, so now uh, there's a pardon for all marijuana convictions, mm -hmm. which I'm sure has nothing to do with election year <laughs> and is unrelated to the pardon on student loans, which has nothing to do with election years. Uh, but my great pal Kellyanne Conway noted that when Kamala Harris was the district attorney in San Francisco or Oakland or wherever, she um, convicted about 1,100 people for marijuana. So um, what do you make of this? And I didn't, let me just add, sorry, I didn't hear them talk about fentanyl. I just heard them talk about pardoning marijuana. Right, or the border, which is wide open, oh. allowing all of these drugs to flow into the United States, including killer drugs like fentanyl. No discussion of that whatsoever. As far as Kamala Harris goes, it's incredible how people change their tunes once they're president, vice president, or running for high office in, in other ways. Look, the Democratic Party is hemorrhaging support among core groups. Mm. Their longtime constituencies of Latinos, African Americans, women, to a great extent, and also the younger vote is just falling away from the Democratic Party. So between this move on marijuana and the student loan uh, forgiveness, th these are two incredibly desperate moves to try to lock in that vote or at least stave off the hemorrhaging. The problem is the rest of us are ending up holding the bag, paying for all of this. You, you think it's going to work, Joe? You think these are very clever, the Democrats, to do this? I wonder if being the Oprah president is the way to go here. You know, you get a pardon and you get a loan. I mean, it's. I always. You could. You could buy me off if you give me a free Tesla. I've always said that. I would have voted for that silly bill. That was a joke. Just kidding. It's a good joke. Uh -huh. You can't recharge it anyway. You were just in California, I weren't was. you? Do you have yes. any air conditioning? Yes. No. I, I did have some air conditioning, but I'm stunned when you drive past every gas station. There's a seven in front of the per yeah. gallon cost. It is completely right. outrageous. On top of the homelessness and crime. Uh, and everything. A very serious point, though, and there are mm -hmm. two related points in a way. Okay, we got uh, the new FBI murder rate number out yeah. uh, for 2021, which was higher than 2020. The reason that's important, as you know, is 2020 was a record. Okay, that yeah. was up 30% in 2020. But um, 2021 still continued up another 4%. All right, that's the FBI murder rate. Right. But at the same time, there's a bunch of stories out there that are very, very disturbing stories that inside the FBI are lots and lots of sexual harassment charges mm -hmm. from reputable whistleblowers and that the FBI director, Ray, and the Justice Department are doing nothing about it. Now, I don't mean confluencing, if there is such a word, the murder rate, but that comes from the FBI. That's the G-men that we love and we hope they solve the murders. Sure. And yet the sexual harassment thing I think is very bad and demoralizing. And think about how long, Larry, Chris Ray has been in power now. He's been there for five years. He's been there oh, for a while. five years? Yeah, yeah remember Comey was fired yeah. May of 2017. Yeah. Uh, so I would expect him to be up on Capitol Hill, particularly if the GOP takes back the House. The American people deserve answers around this because the FBI is in disarray, not just with this, but on many other issues and you got to wonder is the leadership the right people at the top right now you know we were talking with the producers on our conference call this morning and so forth do you remember the fabulous show when we were kids dragnet with joe webb and and the fbi a don't, little don't, after our time oh come on yeah. i can't be the only it was Before in the our time. 60s was it on like with the honeymooners like that was the back to back yes it was <laughs> in the same jackie gleason era okay. the fbi was such a revered organization mm. and here Look at what we're into. I mean, it's terrible. All right, I want to move on. Monica, Supreme Court, the New York State Supreme Court is blocking New York's new gun law banning concealed weapons in specific areas. Now, I happen to think that's probably a good thing for law and order. What say you? 
Oh, absolutely. And, and this law in New York was unconstitutional from the jump. And the Democrats knew that. And Kathy Hochul signed it into law knowing it was likely to be overturned by, by courts. And it may even go all the way up to the Supreme Court if New York State decides to appeal this. But it was totally unconstitutional. They put out a list of public areas where they said you cannot bring a concealed weapon, including bars, movie theaters, and so on. So all of these areas then were known to be wide open for criminals if they wanted to shoot up a bar they knew and the burden was also on these businesses and other locations to put up a proactive sign saying weapons are welcome here oh, so it was advertising right. to criminals what locations were gun free zones and what locations weren't and i think that this if it goes all the way to the Supreme Court and is upheld and, and this law is gutted, it is going to work for law and order and the safety of all New Yorkers. A lot of studies, Joe, quickly, but yes. a lot of studies show that um, concealed weapons and ownership of weapons actually brings down crime. Mm -hmm. Of course it does. John Lott did work on this, Dr. John Lott, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of studies. Right, and this was going to get shot down because there was no historical precedent uh, around this, but Democrats get an F for handling crime in New York. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we talked about the numbers. It's up 34% from last year, and that was already high. Citizens just don't feel safe anymore, particularly on the subway, so they feel they have to protect themselves. So this is a logical thing, and more and more people have a feeling. By the way, Lee Zeldin, Republican candidate for governor, has now tied. He is even with uh, the Democrat Hochul. He's even, and the momentum is with him. Yes, and Larry, yeah. can I just point out, there's also an attorney general race in the state of New York. Letitia James, who is f leveling all of her firepower against President Trump, instead of prosecuting real gun crimes and other violent crimes in New York. She could lose. He, Michael sure. Henry, who's running against her, he can win. is actually running even with her. Yeah, so yeah. there is a possibility. In no, New York the cavalry is coming in New York, too, which is really something else. All right, final thing, uh, our great friend Hunter Biden. I just want to talk about her. Mm -hmm. Lots of speculation in the papers that there's going to be some kind of decision about charging Hunter Biden. Now, now I have a couple of questions on this, Joe. I'll start okay. with you. First of all, um, he is guilty or allegedly guilty of tax evasion. Right. Okay. And also not registering a weapon, too. But all right, blah, blah, blah. Lying on that form. Isn't um, tax evasion a big deal, isn't it? I mean, you're supposed to go to jail if you're convicted of tax evasion. That brought down Al Capone, right? If I well, yeah, that movie correctly. Among others, yeah, that's correct. Okay. But, but the big story, obviously, is did Hunter Biden use the family name to advance these shady deals in countries like China and Ukraine? And is the big guy, Joe Biden, who Tony Bobolinsky, his business partner, says he is, and if he got 10% back, is the sitting president of the United States compromised by places, countries like China and Ukraine? And if that is the case, that's the real story here. Well, okay, so there, Monica, the speculation is, I mean, Miranda Devine has covered this story very carefully, yeah. that he's going to get off easy with respect to the influence. In general, I'm calling call it influence peddling, mm -hmm. that he's not going to get nailed for influence peddling. Mm -hmm. Whether they get him on registering as a foreign rep remains to be seen. But it's the influence peddling that's the key. And it's the question still to this day, did Joe Biden get money from these deals, right? right. We don't that, know that right. to and, this day. And therefore, is he compromised as America's commander in chief in places like Ukraine, where there's a raging war going on, or in China, where the CCP is constantly seeking world domination and engaging in economic warfare, military aggression, diplomatic aggression? We need to know if our president has been compromised by these past dis business deals. I agree with Miranda. I think that they're going after the lower level stuff right. so that they don't have to look at the higher level stuff. And there is a theory that if they charge him, it's only because the FBI, which is so corrupt, which we just talked about, mm -hmm. is also planning to move against President Trump. And they want to make mm -hmm. an argument that there is an equal application of the law and that they are unbiased. See, we're going after both a Republican Republican right. and a Democrat. I got to get out. I can't believe you've not seen Dragnet. It was a fabulous Before thing. Before was our making time, a, Larry. It was a joke. It was <laughs> when the FBI were the G-men, and we really I respected them. I saw the movie them. with Tom Hanks and uh, Dan Aykroyd. There you go. Monica Crowley and Joe Concha, thanks very much.